Well, I don't think that would... Mr. Speaker, will you please call the House to order? The House will come to order. Rabbi Butman will offer a prayer. Let us pray. Avinu Shabbat Shemayim, our Heavenly Father, please bestow your great, your great blessings on this great assembly, the people of the Assembly of the State of New York. Give them, Almighty God, good health and long life. They should be able to continue to serve you and the people in the State of New York effectively as they have done until now, especially if this great assembly has passed a resolution honoring the Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem M. Schneerson with 114 days of education. I am reminded that in 1991, when I opened the United States Senate in Washington, I went to see the Rebbe, and he said to me these words, Take with you a tzedakah pushke. A tzedakah pushke means a charity box. And while you were offered a prayer, you should put in a dollar into the box. Let everybody see what you are doing and let them know what money should be used for. Since then, I do this every time. And now I would like to do exactly what the Rebbe asked me to do. And I would like to put in this dollar on which it says, In God We Trust into the pushke as the Rebbe asked me to. I would also like to invite each and every one of you, if you can, also to participate and do the same. But I don't want you to think that this is a fundraising campaign, because if it was, we would ask you for much more than one dollar. This is a campaign for goodness and kindness. You are elected by the people of New York, and you are the custodians of the laws of justice, of goodness, of kindness, of honesty and decency in the state of New York. And since the state of New York is the leader in the United States, by extension, you're also leading the United States of America, and America is a superpower. So therefore, what you did, the laws that you legislate here in this great body will have an effect on the entire world. 114 days of education in honor of the Rebbe, because the Rebbe cared for the education of each child, each child regardless of race, religion, color, and creed. I heard the Rebbe say many times, I want every child to know that there is an eye that sees, there is an ear that hears, and that the world is not a jungle. And that goes for all the wonderful children of the world. I want you to know in closing that every Shabbos, every Saturday in our shuls, we say a special prayer for each and every one of you. We say, which means, I know that your Hebrew may not be 100%. What it means is that all those who serve the public faithfully, we offer a special blessing. And we ask Almighty God to bestow His blessing on you, not only in your communal life, but also for great success, long life, and happiness and joy in your personal lives. And let us say, amen. amen. Visitors are invited to join the members in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Making money already. Making, uh, making money already. <laughs> you should get a racer. <laughs> a quorum being present, the clerk will read the journal of Friday, April 8th. Mr. Morelli. Mr. Speaker, I move to dispense with a further reading of the journal of Friday, April 8th, and that Thank the same you. stand approved. Without objection, so ordered. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Speaker, colleagues. Um, welcome back from uh, the weekend. And I apologize for getting started a little later today than we had expected. But, uh, but let me uh, try to uh, give members uh, in just a moment our schedule for the day. Before I do that, let me just note a few uh, important uh, things that have happened on this date in history, April 11th. Uh, for instance, and this is of uh, significance, 1968 on this day, President Lyndon Johnson 
who had previously signed the Civil Rights and Voting Rights Act, signed the Fair Housing Civil Rights Act of 1968. The act provided for equal housing opportunities without regard to race, creed, or national origin. On this day in 1970, Apollo 13, an historic Apollo space program mission launched from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. After two days, the lunar landing had to be aborted after an oxygen tank exploded, causing extreme loss of power to the spacecraft. After four days with limited power, the crew returned to Earth, breaking a spacecraft record for the farthest distance humans have ever traveled from Earth. And just a year ago today, President Obama met Cuban President Raul Castro in Panama City during the Summit of the Americas. The encounter marked the first time that presidents of both nations and both countries met in over half a century. Let me uh, give uh, an idea of what our schedule for the day will be. Um, members have on their desks a main calendar. There are 15 new bills on the calendar, beginning with calendar number 480, ending at 494. After any introductions and housekeeping, our work for the day will be to consent the new bills and to take up our equal pay package. Uh, there will be a number of committee meetings off the floor today. There will be a number of committee meetings off the floor tomorrow. Let me give you an idea what today's committee agendas will look like. We will have, uh, not necessarily this order, but members of these committees should pay special note for announcements from, uh, from the desk. Uh, members of the Government Employees Committee, Social Services, Codes and Rules will all meet. That will produce an A calendar, uh, which we'll work from today, and that includes, as I said, our equal pay bills. Um, in addition to those committees, we will also have the Aging, Environmental Conservation, and Racing and Wagering Committees will meet off the floor uh, at some point this afternoon. With that as a general outline, Mr. Speaker, I note there are introductions, there may be housekeeping as well. This would be the appropriate time to take those up. Certainly. Uh, for the purposes of a introduction, Ms. Weinstein. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to join a number of my colleagues that I think will be speaking after me to welcome Rabbi Button uh, to the chamber uh, again this year, as he has for many years in celebration of the Rebbe's birthday as we celebrate uh, education of the not only students in New York, Days of Education, but students throughout the, the world. Uh, I was very proud to represent the Lubavitch community when I first was elected and continue over the years to both represent uh, some of the Lubavitch, some members of uh, the Lubavitch community, but uh, certainly continue the, the good relations and are aware of the good work uh, that uh, the Lubavitch uh, youth uh, committee does and throughout the, the, the state, uh, the city, the state, and throughout the world. I'm very happy to welcome Rabbi Butman uh, here today and hope you extend the uh, courtesies of the floor to him. Thank you. Mr. Hyken on the same subject. Rabbi Butman, uh, I'm happy that you're here because it gives me the opportunity to speak about someone who was one of the most remarkable figures of the 20th century, and not just the 20th century, but who continues to be a remarkable figure. While he's not with us physically, his teachings, which are so fundamental, I think, regardless of who you are, what your background, and the things that you believe, the fundamental things that he stood for not being judgmental, loving everyone. He was a proud Jew. But at the same time, he treated everyone in a fashion that we should treat people. The fundamental thing that he stood for, education, something that we in this chamber all the years, something we reiterate constantly, that, found, that education is the foundation of civilization the foundation of our society, that education he understood is about our children, and they are the future. They're the ones who are going to be sitting here in decades to come. One of the things I found out today, and I should have known, and it sort of hit me when we were at the reception earlier, the Rebbe's yard site, the, the memorial of the Rebbe, in Hebrew is Yod Aleph Nisan, the month of Nisan on the Hebrew calendar. Yod Aleph, the 11th day. 
It's a date that I didn't realize until today had special significance to me because it was the day that my father passed away, a couple of days before Passover. And now suddenly, my father's memory, of course, is huge, but now in conjunction with one of the greatest people of our generation. And I have to share one other thought with you. It may not be a very big thing, but you know, it's the little things that uh, I think God loves. It's not about changing the world all the time, even though that's nice uh, to try to change the world for the better. But it's the little things that we do for each other, even maybe a good morning uh, to your neighbor, especially a neighbor you don't care for. That's huge. But a little story that I have repeated a thousand times about who this man was who had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of followers all over the world. I remember as a very, very young person walking in Crown Heights, the headquarters of Lubavitch. And I was with my mother. You know, survivor of Auschwitz had gone through so much in life, lost her parents in a gas chamber, and we were walking on East Road Parkway on the Sabbath. And this man is coming down the block. I noticed immediately who it was. It was the Rebbe. My mother never got over the simple fact that this great man didn't wait for someone to say good Shabbos or hi, how are you? But automatically, the Rebbe, this great man, walked over to my mother and greeted her. It changed my mother for the rest of her life because she never stopped repeating the story of this great man coming to her. All he did was say, hello, good Shabbos, a good Sabbath. So I thank you, Rabbi Butman, for the work that you do in perpetuating the memory. And that memory is alive because all over the world, one of my staff members is on his way to Tokyo. I said, where are you going to have kosher food? He said, Lubavitch. Of course, I've made arrangements already for the Sabbath. And that is true in 160 countries in the world. You have people like Rabbi Butman. Take a look at him. The next generation and the next generation going all over the world. And it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't make a difference. Are you religious? Not religious? Yes. No. Do you believe in God? You don't. If you come, you are fed. You are given warmth. And that's what Lubavitch is all about. So God bless you, Rabbi Butman, and speaker, Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity uh, to make me feel very good to recognize one of the greatest people of our generation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Weprin on the same subject. Oh, oh. Yeah, one more. Speaker, uh, I too uh, want to welcome Rabbi Shmuel Butman uh, to our chamber as he comes uh, each and every year. Uh, Rabbi Butman uh, and my family, uh, my, uh, my father as well as my uh, late uncle, uh, knew Rabbi Butman very well, were very involved in many of his activities, and I point out uh, each and every year uh, that due to Rabbi Butman, the uh, largest uh, menorah in the world uh, is in the middle of Manhattan uh, in, by the Plaza Hotel on uh, 59th Street uh, in each and every year. Uh, Rabbi Butman uh, leads a delegation of individuals to light uh, a different candle uh, each and every night, and I've participated uh, in that ceremony many, many times, and it really uh, gets to show the world uh, the, uh, the lights of Hanukkah and the, uh, the tradition uh, of Hanukkah, and uh, that's only one small thing that Rabbi Butman does. He does so many other things uh, for education, and I'm very happy uh, to vote for this resolution. Uh, approving the 114 days uh, of education uh, in, uh, in honor of uh, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, the Lubavitcher Rebbe's uh, birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much. Certainly. On behalf of uh, members he Heiken, members Weprin, members Weinstein, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor as we do every year. Your family, you're always welcome. Please come back and see us next time. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ms. Warner for an introduction. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me the opportunity to make this introduction. We are joined in the chamber today uh, by a group of students and their advisors from the South Lens Falls High School. These students at South Lens or South High um, are the marathon dancers. They are the organizers of the marathon dance, which is in its 39th year. And the marathon dance over 39 years has raised $5.56 million for, to support uh, people in their community. It is, uh, it's an amazing program in which it is completely student run and they put out a call each year for uh, people in the community who need support. They get about 200 applications or nominations. A group of seven students get together and they, they approach this thoughtfully and with integrity and honesty and they make their choices. There were 43 recipients this year and then they raise money all year. 800 students danced, they have, to, they have to each raise a minimum of $150, but they raised so much more than that. And at the end of 28 hours of dancing, 28 hours on their feet, um, they announced how much money they was raised each year. And this year, these students raised, are you ready? $762,153.87 for their community. So it is my privilege to introduce you to the uh, student organizers of this year's event. They are all seniors. Um, we have Haley Weeks and Emily Boucher, Alexis Potter, Dylan Murphy, Nick Barden, Skylar Munson, Mackenzie Myatt. And they're joined by their adult advisors, um, Thomas Myatt, Jody Sheldon, Carla Viviano, and Superintendent of South Glens Falls High, uh, School, Superintendent Michael Patton. I ask you uh, uh, to, on behalf of the, uh, those assembled to welcome them to the chamber and offer them the cordiality of the house. Certainly, on behalf of Ms. Werner, Speaker, and all the members, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. We congratulate you on the fundraising that you've done, a remarkable achievement. Uh, I am sure your hearts are filled with the uh, joy of being able to help others. And what better way than to do it through dance? Thank you so very much. <laughs> Mr. Palmasano. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you for letting me interrupt the proceedings for an introduction. Uh, first, uh, joining me in the back of the chamber, joining us in the back of the chamber today is someone who really needs no introduction. Uh, he's my predecessor, uh, former Assemblyman Jim Bacallis. Uh, Jim is uh, doing great in retirement. He just recently returned from uh, spring training down at Tampa working for the New York Yankees, and he's taking a little hiatus before he starts his uh, second part-time job uh, pouring wine at one of our famous wineries on Seneca Lake. So uh, uh, Jim's up visiting for a special occasion, and we just uh, wonder if you could just... Uh, as always, just welcome Jim back to this chamber. He's a good friend to so many of us here. Certainly on behalf of Mr. Palomasano, the speaker and all the members. Jim, welcome back. We're always glad to have you. As a former member, you are always welcome here, and you always have the, uh, extend the privileges of the floor. Wine and baseball, can't think of a better life. There is life after the assembly. Thank you so much. <laughs> Mr. Palomasano for a second introduction. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, for allowing me to interrupt one more time. Uh, also joining, joining us in the chamber today is a very important person to me. Um, I first met this person in 1996 when we first worked together. We worked together for about eight years. Uh, her name is Liz Lesperitz. Um, not only is, uh, uh, did we work together, but Liz is in some ways a second mother to me. Uh, in fact, she's... I, consider her a part of my family. She attended my wedding in 1998. My kids, who are now 13 and 11, always look forward to visiting Liz. Um, she's a familiar face to probably a number of you. Uh, those of you who know Liz know she's a very special lady. Uh, she's known for her pleasant demeanor, being a caring person, a big smile, an infectious laugh, and her affection for some red cat wine. Uh, but Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, not only is Liz a part of my family, but she's a part of our family. Uh, she's been a part of this institution working in the assembly for 39 years, worked for our conference for 39 years. 
Uh, she started on Valentine's Day in 1977, so that should show you her love and dedication for this place. Started with Glenn Warren in 1977 and worked 18 years until she actually worked for my predecessor, Jim Bacalis, in 1996, where she worked from 1996 to 2010. And it's been a privilege for me to have Liz on my staff since 2011. Well, Liz is uh, ending her retire retiring at the end of the month after 39 years uh, to this institution. If you could just join me in thanking her, congratulating her, and wish her the very best uh, in her future endeavors. She's a big part of this institution, a big part of part of me, and I just wish you could extend the cordialities. And Certainly, Mr. Paolo Masano. On behalf of Mr. Paolo Masano, the speaker, and all the members, Liz. You are family, so you always have the privileges of the floor. It seems amazing that you could come here and start working with us at one year ago, but I guess that's how it worked out. So happy to have you. Enjoy your next life. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Santa Barbara for an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to interrupt the proceedings for the purposes of an introduction. Today, I'm very pleased to introduce Megan Libertucci. She is a teacher from the Schenectady City School District who was recently named the District's Teacher of the Year. Megan has earned this prestigious award through her tireless dedication to her students. She grew up in the Capital Region and graduated from Shenandoah High School in our neighboring Saratoga County. And it was there that she embraced the importance of kindness and leadership in the classroom and was inspired to pursue teaching as a lifelong career. Megan worked hard to become an educator and soon found a home for her talents and abilities at Schenectady High School, where she remained committed to helping her students succeed for 13 years. She earned her official certification from the National Board of Professional Teaching Standards in 2009 through advising groups such as Students Against Drunk Driving and the class of 2019 Megan established herself as a leader at Schenectady High and a dedicated professional in the field of education. Her colleagues praise her as an example of patience, student care, and leadership in the classroom. And the lives of her students are undoubt undoubtedly improved by her presence as a teacher and a role model. I'm very proud to have her with us here today. She is joined by her husband, Mike Libertucci, who is also a teacher from my alma mater, Shelmont High School in my hometown of Rotterdam. We'll be recognizing her with an assembly resolution that we'll be taking up later today. But for now, Mr. Speaker, if you would welcome her to the chamber and extend to her all the cordialities of the House. Certainly, but first, Mr. Phillips, start on the same subject. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I also uh, bring congratulations to Megan for her tremendous achievement. She works in a school district that has a tremendous history at one time, one of the best uh, education systems in the entire United States, a multi-ethnic, multi-racial district, and I'm very pleased that this year, through our efforts, we were able to bring an additional $12 million of aid to that school system, and hopefully we are giving Megan and her colleagues uh, more of the tools uh, that they need to work with. Thank you very much. Certainly, on behalf of Mr. Santa Barbara, Mr. Steck, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome you here, Megan, to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. Our congratulations on such a prestigious award. Keep up that good work. Take care of our children. We leave them in your hands. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Mr. Lenardis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, colleagues. Uh, I stand to welcome a distinguished uh, delegation uh, with us here today um, that we are welcoming uh, celebrating Russian American Heritage uh, Month. On March 30th, we adopted uh, a resolution proclaiming April 2016 as Russian American History Month in the state of New York. And I want to uh, thank uh, Assembly Member Sepulveda and all the colleagues that co-sponsor this resolution on both sides of, of the aisle. And this resolution uh, basically highlights the significance 
significant contributions uh, of numerous individuals of Russian heritage, enhancing opportunity for Russian American youth uh, to take pride in their forebearers and to identify with them as role models. Uh, this resolution highlights the achievement and the recognition of Russian invex investors, um, inventors, scientists, literary and art figures, as well as the contribution of Russian immigrants to the United States of America and our state of New York. This year's Russian American History Month is dedicated to the 55th anniversary of Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin's first space flight on April 12, 1961. Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space, making a 108-minute orbital flight in his uh, Bostov-1 space spacecraft. Mr. Speaker, I would like to uh, now name the distinguished delegation that we have here with us today. Uh, Father Alexander Gulobov, representing Bishop John, administrator of the patriarchal parishes in the United States of America. I would like to uh, also acknowledge Father George Kovnet, Chancellor of the patriarchal parishes of parishes of the Russian Orthodox Church, USA. Irina Saparnova, celebrated singer and director of the Golden Rooster Group. I'd like to welcome Denis uh, Lebov, Russian Youth Organization, New York. Roman Makhmuktov, photographer. Julio Rodriguez, co-founder and board member of RAC C. Olga Sepsepina, president of RAC C chair, coalition supporting Russian American History Month, vice chair. And from a delegation we have here from Albany, I would like to, um, from the new Russia Cultural Center, uh, welcome Tania Deptola, president of new Russia Cultural Center in Albany, we also welcome Olga Alexandrova, uh, Valentina uh, Sergeva, Marina Tavoroskaya, Greg Lorne, uh, Irina Smirnova, Borognika uh, Stryker, Olga Belensky, Taisha Melchanka, Mr. Speaker, I ask that you afford all the privileges of the House and welcome this distinguished delegation. Certainly, on behalf of Assemblymember Linares, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome this distinguished delegation here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. We celebrate with you this Russian History Month here in the state of New York. We hope that you will have enjoyed this, this visit and will come back and see us real soon. Thank you so very much. And we do have some uh, housekeeping, Mr. Morelli. On a motion by Mr. Kusick, page six, Calendar 4, Bill Number 49, amendments are received and adopted. On a motion by Mr. Santa Barbara, page 14, Calendar Number 112, Bill Number 2417B, amendments are received and adopted. On a motion by Mr. Kavanaugh, page 17, Calendar Number 150, Bill Number 3389, amendments are received and adopted. On a motion by Mr. Aubrey, page 47, calendar number 483, bill number 4409A, amendments are received and adopted. Mr. Morelli. 